friends! So today I want to recommend to you some books about climate change. There are a ton of books out there about climate change and if you're not a climatologist it might be a little bit confusing. So if you are like me you probably first heard about climate change when you were in middle school in your science class and your teacher was like in a hundred years the climate will change and the apocalypse will fall upon us and you were like oh no. Well it turns out that that's not quite how climate change works. Climate change isn't something that we're just going to be dealing with in the future. It's something that we are already dealing with now. I'm writing a book and the topic of said book is about exactly that, about how climate change isn't something of the distant future, about how it is something that communities and people around the world, including in the United States, are dealing with right now. In my book I talk about climate change from an emergency management perspective, how we're going to manage disasters that are a consequence of climate change, how we can take action to try and prevent them, and how we can plan to recover from them when they do happen. But in order to be able to accurately write this book I've had to spend a lot of time reading books about climate change specifically to see what other people are saying, to see how people are framing those conversations. So anyways, because of that, I've read a lot of books on climate change. And I think that I'm in a pretty good position right now to recommend to you some different options. And none of these books that I have are necessarily to convince somebody who denies the climate is changing. These books are mostly written to explain the science behind climate change to people who already are on board with the consensus of the scientific community. The first book that I have is Earth by Bill McKibben. Uh, Bill McKibben you've probably heard of. He is the founder of 350.org. He's a leader in the environmental movement. This one was written in 2010. One thing you kind of have to watch out for when you're reading books about climate change is that uh, they tend to rely pretty heavily on statistics, which sometimes can get a little outdated. Uh, so one thing I recommend is trying to read books that are more recent about climate change. I think this book is a really good introduction. I don't agree with Bill McKibben on everything that he says in this book, but I think that if you're somebody who is just trying to get kind of a big picture view of climate change um, and not necessarily get into nitty gritty details, I think this is a really good place to start. Um, he is not academic in this. Uh, it's, it's a really easy read. He has end notes and everything for evidence purposes for what he says, but it's not written in a way that is academic or um, anything like that, which I know people sometimes don't really like to read. This is a good starting place, but I definitely wouldn't just read this and then be done because there are different perspectives and critiques of some of what he said in here. This next book is called Overheated. I was so excited to read this book. I actually was a little disappointed by this book when I read it. Out of nowhere I created these like weirdly high expectations of this book. Now that I've had time to think it through. This actually is a really good book. This book kind of picks up where other climate change books have left off and talks in more detail about the actual consequences of climate change. So it goes past just talking about sea level rising. It talks about migration and famine and civil conflict and all of these other consequences of climate change more than just heat waves and sea level rise, which is what we hear most often about. So this is a good one to check out. I probably should have shown you this one first, but this next book I have is called Climate Change, What Everyone Needs to Know by Joseph Rom. This book is so great. Um, I just discovered this, to be honest. I have not read it word for word yet, uh, but I flipped through it and I discovered the table of contents and almost passed out because it is the most beautiful table of contents I have ever seen in my entire life. This is the table of contents. It goes by chapter and it's broken out as questions. For me, one of the biggest problems in trying to talk about climate change and do science communication around climate change is that it's such a massive topic. Unless you're a climatologist, I don't know how you're supposed to know all of the little scientific details of what the difference between 2 and 2.5 degrees warming is. Climate science is really complex and the average person doesn't have the time or the ability or the resources to uh, keep up. And yet when you study something that's similar or you're trying to communicate climate change to people, especially if you don't have a receptive audience for what you're talking about, it can be really, really challenging. So I think a resource like this is really great for anybody who is trying to do just that. I think a book like this has a really far-reaching audience. 
Um, when I look through it, I thought first of people who are teachers, specifically like high school science teachers who are trying to teach climate change. I thought of environmental activists uh, who are trying to kind of keep up with the latest climate data. I also thought of journalists who are writing about climate change related issues. I also thought of people like me who are in a discipline where uh, climate change really matters to us. Um, so I think this book is a really, really great resource. Yeah, it's almost like a handy pocket guide or something. Um, I'm definitely going to be referencing this book a lot as I write my book. Um, I think anybody else who's writing a book that's even semi-related to climate change could really benefit from this one. And it came out in 2016, which means it has some of the most up-to-date information in it. So this is a must. So the next book I have is This Changes Everything by... Okay, the title's on the back of this book. I don't know why that's like this. This Changes Everything, Capitalism versus the Climate by Naomi Klein. I think I may have mentioned before that the Shock Doctrine by Naomi Klein is one of my favorite books. Uh, this is the book that she wrote after that one. It builds on a lot of what she talked about in the Shock Doctrine, but focuses specifically on climate change and the U.S. economy. Well, the world economy, but the U.S. economy and capitalism specifically. It talks about the role that capitalism has played in creating climate change and how it is difficult to think of a path forward uh, in stopping and reversing climate change uh, without interrogating our economic system. Um, I will say that she is a bit more hopeful than I am towards the end of this book. Uh, nonetheless, the vast majority of this book is really, really useful and is really well written. Naomi Klein is known for being able to write about these big and overwhelming topics and connect them to people and connect them to communities and, and to really illustrate how all of these different things like climate change and the economy are connected and how we need to consider multiple systems in order to have a conversation about climate change. Uh, like I said, there are a ton of other books out there on climate change. A lot of them are really good. Um, maybe I'll do a part two of this video at some point. As always, the books I have talked about are down below.